One of the other main benefits about having an electrified platform, purely electric, is simplified mechanics. So you have the battery, the motor, the inverter, and some other electrical um, items that actually control the motion. Um, with an internal combustion engine, you've got gaskets to fail, exhaust to hull and replace, um, or become noisy. You've got things like timing belts and other belts to obviously change. Um, we've obviously given miles, uh, which obviously can incur very, very high uh, cost because normally when you replace your, say, timing belt, most people will change your water pump. There's no water pump. So there's a pump and your timing chain or belt as a cost saving that's not gonna be there. Um, obviously, like I said previously, there's no oils or waters to change and filters, so there's your extra savings. Uh, there's no transmission. The way that the electric vehicles work, they work on a um, reduction gear that effectively replaces your transmission. So instead of having several gears or gearboxes or, or clutches and flywheels, it's just one reduction gear that spins apparently from zero to about 20,000 RPM. So your torque is instant. Um, there's no um, delay in getting to your torque bank. So the torque band operates from zero up to its maximum. Um, they do have a limiting factor because of that, that there's no effective gears to go through. Um, and that means that the top speed is going to be limited. But in all honesty, guys, 100 mile an hour is going to be enough for most people. Um, with, you know, maybe if you live in certain countries like Germany and you want to rip up at 120, 130 mile an hour, most countries have a, a very, very sedate legal limit. Um, and obviously that's not good for your license or your livelihood. Um, so there's that. So like I say, the, the simplified mechanics means that there's a lot less to go wrong. Um, what I will be interested to see, obviously going onto the high mileage with my Nissan Leaf is exactly um, how much these individual components will cost. And obviously, uh, like I've said in my previous video, I will actually relay all of the information so then you can actually make um, a judgment and see, for example, say you've got 250,000 miles and you needed a new short engine or a complete engine block for that matter and all of the valves and everything else. I'll break all those figures down and I'll relay them over to you guys. Hopefully, there's some Leafs around the country that have done over 200,000 miles and they're still going strong with no issues. So all vehicles are built, built differently. I'll run the car, like I say, between four and five years and I'll relay all of those that information back to you. And maybe at the end of the four or five years, you can look back and go, well, it cost X amount of money. Maybe it's not there yet or not good enough for you. But like I say, that's the whole point of me getting the vehicle. So I can actually relay all this information to you and we can see where we go from there. The next thing, which, and on my last point, is noise noise and vibration. Now, no matter how smooth your car is, um, in engine-wise, in this particular car I'm driving right now, which is uh, a Kia Karens, is got a fantastically smooth automatic gearbox and a beautiful diesel engine, um, although not really environmentally friendly. That's another story. Um, but noise and vibration within electric vehicles is completely um, diminished. Um, you still get road noise because all vehicles still have tires. So after about, it's about, I, I noticed on the two models that I test drove, about 20 mile an hour, they will actually start generating tire noise that you cannot alleviate. And obviously the same with wind noise, when you're um, going at certain speeds, you'll get wind noise. Although I must admit, the previous shape leaf was actually a fantastically quiet. Um, as far as vibration is concerned, there is none. Um, okay, you'll get vibration from um, bumps and lumps as you go down the road with all cars. You, you can't get rid of that unless you've got... My particular vehicle I've got, it's got conventional uh, suspension. So you will pick up uh, undulations in the road and lumps and bumps. So you can't get around that. Um, but yeah, the noise is eerily quiet. Um, the one concern I've got is for pedestrians. Now, 
all electric vehicles generate what's called a, a vehicle electronic sound system, which effectively, they're all named different acronyms, but basically they emit a sound outside the vehicle. So as you're traveling along, people can actually hear it. Um, obviously it doesn't affect people if they've got earphones in or muffs over their ears, or they probably wouldn't hear a traditional car coming because most cars are very quiet anyway. Um, that's my only main concern at the moment and you will have to be very vigilant and observant and be very aware uh, that you're driving an extremely quiet vehicle under 20 mile an hour. Um, maybe in the future, like the BMW i8, which has a, uh, a small little internal combustion engine that generates power for the, um, the drivetrain, the, uh, the batteries to propel the car forward, that actually has a fantastic V8 sound inside and outside the vehicle. Um, in the town where where I work, there's actually two gentlemen that have actually got those vehicles, and they just sound like V8 petrols. I mean, they sound phenomenal, but they're full electric. So um, it'll be interesting to see in maybe months or years to come if we can actually download, like we can ringtones for our smartphones, uh, sounds of I don't know some exotic uh, vehicle that people will actually hear it coming on the outside. On the inside, it'll be completely silent. Who knows? But that's something to look forward to further down the line. Um, and that's about it, guys. Um, I hope this was actually a lot more inf uh, informative to you guys about all of the pros. Um, in years to come, the whole point of doing this test, who knows? It might end up being a complete disaster. I, I can't see it happening because the current generation Leaf has got a fantastic track record. There's taxi drivers over the world that have been using uh, the, that current generation LEAF for over four or five years and they've had no major issues. Um, and because of the simplified drivetrain, which we've already um, covered, there's a lot less to go wrong. But like I say, that's why I'm doing all of these tests for you guys and for myself to then know that obviously if the vehicles are good enough for our work and for uh, non-commercial use, We'll have to see in the next four to five years. Um, just before I go, um, I've been invited next Monday uh, by my uh, dealership up in uh, Bishop Stalford, which is uh, Glenn Hopkins. Um, the salesperson up there, by the way, is uh, Derek Clark. Great guy. Derek, if you're watching, thanks for all your help and information. Really, really appreciated. And I've been invited to this uh, launch over in St Albans. Um, I'm really hoping that I can attend. I've obviously got responsibilities that I've got to cover first, but I'm really hoping to go to that one. If I can't get to that uh, launch, I will obviously go to another one as one becomes more local to me. Um, but yeah, really, really hoping to look, looking forward to seeing the car actually in the flesh, sitting in it and getting a feel for the vehicle. That's about it for now, guys. Um, I'll speak to you soon. And thanks for watching. Bye.